Grateful you've joined us, those of you on live stream. This will be our ninth message in the New Covenant series. A unilateral covenant. This is a, a very important subject and perspective. I've never really heard anyone other than myself, preach on this. <laughs> it doesn't mean no one has. I'm just saying that I haven't heard of them. Unilateral covenant means it's one-sided. It's not a two-sided covenant. The old covenant was two-sided. You do this, God says, I'll do that. That's not the way, that's not the man of the new covenant. From the standpoint of language, the New Covenant is, is a contract or a, a bond or a pact or a transaction. But from the standpoint of God, it's a promise. It's a, it's a pledge. It's a declaration. It's a resolution. It's a prophecy. It's a revelation. It's an annunciation. It's a promulgation. <laughs> Those all words that apply to God. God let the world work for 4,000 years, 2,500 years before the law, in which most uh, historians agree that the most intelligent people the world has ever known lived in that period. All mathematical, all mathematical and scientific knowledge was discovered at that period, medicinal included. Then there was a 1,500 years under the law where God concentrated his work on a group of people, a given group of people. He gave them every advantage. He, he defined sin for them. He told them what to avoid he, and what to do down to the finest detail, down to eating and wearing clothes and plowing. All total, that's 4,000 years up to Christ. Nobody, not a single person, was able to consistently please God. No one was able to do what God wanted without God telling them. So we should learn from that not, not to try and please God by routines and procedures and methodologies and this sort of thing. Man doesn't have the capacity to figure it out. First 2,500 years tells you that. And it doesn't make any difference how many directions you give humanity. It doesn't make any difference how many you do. They still can't do it. All self-help claims notwithstanding. So unilateral is in that context, one-sided, non-reciprocating. What God does in Christ does not depend on what you do. And you want to understand what I'm saying now. Unilateral is a contract or engagement by which an express obligation to do or forbear is imposed on one party. That's what a unilateral covenant is. Man's already proved, or God's already proved, man can't be trusted. God cannot have an arrangement with man that depends on man, how man reacts. He's already proved that doesn't work. How, how many, what do we need, another thousand years? 
Need another 2,000 years? We've had 4,000 years. That's told you. God can't depend on man to do his part, no, even if he's told what his part is. He can't do it. So you heard the covenant read from Jeremiah the prophet. It was a prophecy. And then Hebrews 8 tells you that's the covenant that Jesus is mediating. That covenant was promised to Jeremiah to Judah and to Israel. It wasn't promised to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Understand, it wasn't yeah. promised to anybody else. Right. If anybody else is involved in it, it's just because God gave them grace. Yes. Amen. It wasn't promised to anybody else. Now, if you read through that covenant, it contains no stipulations. Hmm? Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm? There are no ifs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah's covenant listing of it lists four I wills and three they shalls. The reiteration in Hebrews lists four I wills and two they shalls. That's a one-sided. See, he only told you What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't say, I will if they will. Uh, that, that, that's right. He doesn't say, I will and they should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, I will, they shall. Amen. That's right. So wherever the shall isn't, the will isn't. Mm. Got to see this. This is why it's time long past time for professed Christians to stop apologizing for the state of the church. Yes, amen. Time to stop that. Mm -hmm. Time for all the self-help people to get an honest job. Yeah, right, yeah. Do something that they can do. Mm -hmm. God's told you what he's going to do and there's only one thing that can involve you in it and that is faith. Amen. It's only if you believe this that you can have any part of it at all. Amen. Now let's just notice some of the announcements. Made The covenant made announcements. This covenant I will make. Mm, yeah. This is the covenant I will make. Mm. I will put my laws into their minds. See the nature of the covenant. This is not how the old covenant was phrased. Yeah. The old covenant said, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt. See? Yeah. I will write the, my laws in their hearts. Uh -huh. See? Amen. It's one-sided. I will be to them a God. They shall be to me a people. They shall not teach every man his neighbor, every man his brother saying, know the Lord. They won't. Mm -hmm. They shall all know me for the least of the greatest. I will be merciful. Yeah. Their unrighteousness, their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. See, that's the, that's the entirety of the covenant yeah. that I just yeah. stated there. Yeah. The entire of the covenant is one-sided. One yes. Now let's look at the basis of the covenant. How God can have an arrangement mm -hmm. like this. It centers in a person, mm -hmm. yeah. not in men meeting the requirement. Yeah. That's the difference. That's the difference. The first covenant, the old covenant, didn't depend on Moses. Mm -hmm. See? It depended on the people. This covenant is unilateral, one-sided, and God is dependent on a, a person, but it's, it's not from us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 42 and verses, uh, verse 1 and 2, 1 through 6, is a prophecy about Christ. And he refers, God refers to Christ as his servant. Here's what he says. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect. That's just one, one side at all yeah. so far. In whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. 
He shall bring forth judgment to victory. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. Mm -hmm. He shall bring forth judgment on the truth. Now, notice the difference between this and the old covenant. You've got, to, you've got to see this. This is not like the old covenant. He shall not fail, yeah. Amen. nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith the Lord God, thus saith God the Lord, he hath created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the sun and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein, I the Lord have called thee, as the servant, uh -huh, yeah. in righteousness and will hold thine hand mm -hmm. and will keep thee mm -hmm. and will give thee for a covenant. Yes. I will give thee, this is the Messiah, this is Christ, I will give thee for a covenant to the people and for a light to the Gentiles. So this depends upon a person, but it's God's servant, Amen. not us. You've got to decide in yourself whether Jesus was faithful or not. At some point, every person has to make this choice. Do I believe Jesus is faithful or not? Yeah. Amen. Backsliders don't believe this. Yeah. Yeah. People that fall into sin over and over and over and over, they don't believe this. Mm -hmm. Jesus, God said he'll not fail. Yeah. He'll not be discouraged. See, at some point, people have to believe this. Mm -hmm. Then they can be part of this uh, yeah. Yeah. unilateral covenant. And he will affect the people. Mm -hmm. Those first six verses I read about, the next verse says, Here's, I'll give him for a covenant of the people and a light to the Gentiles to, yeah. in order to, mm -hmm. open the blind eyes yeah. that he's going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this so he'll, he will open the blind eyes Amen. And bring out the prisoners from the prison, and then that sit in darkness out of the prison house. God's telling you, this is what I, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Amen. If you're in Christ, you're in Christ because that's what He did. Amen. His servant, whom He appointed, opened up your eyes yes. and delivered you. Amen. Amen. And if there's somebody whose eyes aren't open, and they aren't delivered. They've had a bad attitude toward Jesus, yeah. no matter what they say. Because right. yeah. Jesus will not fail. Amen. Yes. And you'll not be discouraged. So if someone's eyes aren't opened, it's not because Jesus failed. That's right. yeah. Amen. It's not because he became discouraged. It's because they rejected yes. the Lord's Christ, and somebody's got to tell them that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So they'll be convicted of sin. Now, Christ's blood ratifies the covenant, yeah. seals it, because the covenant God is, uh, ratifies, seals, finalizes a covenant with blood. Under the law, it was prefigured by animal blood. Moses took the blood of animals, he sprinkled the book mm -hmm. that contained the words of the covenant, and he sprinkled the people. And that people said, we'll do everything God said. That was the covenant. Yeah. That was the agreement. See, God, God was very plain, wasn't he, what to do. Uh -huh. he, he didn't hesitate, didn't hide anything. Uh -huh. yeah. Told him, this is it. Mm -hmm. You got to do everything I say. There can be no exceptions. You can't fail. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you one time and you're out. Yeah. 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 Not three times and you're out. Mm -hmm. One time. And you're out. And Adam can tell you, that's the way God operates. Yeah, amen. Amen. He can tell you. Mm -hmm. Adam stands as a witness. Yes. You got one chance. Mm -hmm. If it depends on you, you got one chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the first chance he got, Adam sinned. Yeah. See? I'm, I'm good news to me that this is a different kind of a yeah. covenant. Yeah. Christ's blood ratifies the covenant. This, this is the declaration. 
Hebrews 10, 29. He tells you first that those under the law died without mercy. There was no mercy. You broke the law, they just killed you. That was it. There wasn't any mercy at all. How much sore punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy? Is there something worse than killing you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's something worse than somebody killing you. How about how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite to the Spirit of grace as testifying of the blood. See, God will not overlook that. You say, can he be forgiven? He's, he's got to seek it aggressively. Yeah, yeah, amen. It may be God will give him repentance. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12, 24, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood mm -hmm. of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of disagreement among people about some of these recovery programs, I understand. I have a question for the people that are devoted to recovery programs, including an Alcoholics Anonymous and everything's based on it. What kind of blood do you use? They was an explanation. Don't they was an explanation? God has told us any agreement between God and men. It's got to be ratified by blood. You can't tell people I base this on the be attitudes, and if you can do them, you'll be here. You can't do that. Yeah, that's right. uh -huh. To have a system that works, it's got to be based on blood. Now, so what is the blood of this uh, eight-step and 12-step? What is it? Where's your blood? Yeah. You also answer those of us who are in disagreement with you. Mm -hmm. Don't criticize us. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the blood. Yeah. Tell us if God will let Christ's blood make your program work. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody on earth that's foolish enough to believe that? That the blood of God's Son could be applied to another program because only His blood has power. Amen. Sanctifying power we're talking about. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again the, from the dead the Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the covenant, uh, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus was brought back even through the blood. Yeah, right. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen. This establishes now that the, this unilateral covenant, but God, he can do this because it's based on the blood of Christ. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. He can do this because the servant who's going to activate it is his own son. Yes. Now I want to make a point here because I've heard people say this quite often. Jesus did not keep the law for us. And if you've thought he did, you're, you're just wrong. That's all. So I'm going to take, I'm going to get, take a moment here yeah. to substantiate this. Jesus did not keep the law for us. Yeah. Now, it's commonly taught, and I think it's just taught because somebody heard somebody say this, that we couldn't keep the law, so Jesus kept the law for us, and then we get the credit for Jesus keeping the law. That's not true. Amen. Yeah. Now, when it comes down to what Jesus did for us, mm -hmm. for us, it's spelled out. We, we don't want to have to guess at this. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll, I'll just take some time and read what, what Jesus did for us. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't keep the law. He, he didn't obey for you. That's right. Yep. Amen. Romans 5.8. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died uh -huh. yes. for us. Yeah, there it is. It tells you. Romans 8.32. He spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us yeah. all. Romans 8.34. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died, yea, rather is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. There it is again. 2 yeah. Corinthians 5, 21. 
he, God, hath made him, Christ, to be sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Yes. Where it is written, cursed, cursed is everyone hanging on the tree. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5.2, we walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell and savor. <laughs> where, where, that was on the cross. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.10, who died for us. Yeah. Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us. Hebrews 10.20, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us, that is through the veil, that is to say his flesh. 1 Peter 2.21, Christ also suffered for us. 1 Peter 4.1, Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. And 1 John 3.16, Hereby I perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he didn't, he didn't do the obeying that we were intended to do. That's right. Amen. And one of the things, that everyone sees that, I trust everyone sees that. The, the, the scripture's plain about yeah. this now. Yeah. Amen. He did not keep the law for us. Uh -huh. He did not obey, and then his obedience has transferred to your account. That's, right. uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's not what salvation is doing. Yeah. Amen. And secondly, it's not the righteousness of Christ that's imputed to you. Yeah, that's right. He doesn't take Christ's righteousness that was lived out on earth, as some people think, for you, and then impute that to you. No. It's the righteousness of God Amen. that's imputed yes. to you. The, the gospel announces the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. She said announced yes. in the in the gospel. Mm -hmm. And Romans three twenty two tells us the righteousness of God, which is by faith mm -hmm. of G faith that comes from Jesus Christ upon all and unto all them that believe. Romans 4.11, Abraham received the sign of circumcision, the seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had been not yet circumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though he be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. Mm -hmm. It should be obviously that right, it wasn't the righteousness of Christ. It yeah. was imputed to Abraham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the righteousness of God. See, God, yeah. God only approves of his own character. Amen. That's right. You all right? God only approves of his own character. But he had to have a man to overcome the devil and to work out redemption. So he sent his son, who's the man, Christ Jesus. And because of what he did, God imputes his righteousness the divine nature to you. That's the right. the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That's what we're that's what we're talking about. Uh -huh. Here. So we're liberated from the law as a means of righteousness. That's Romans ten and verse four. Liberated from the law. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. That is to say you don't, you're not righteous because you did what God told you to do. That's not what righteousness yeah. in Christ is. Because the law required complete and total and unvarying obedience. Yeah. It didn't allow for mistakes or faults or failing or did then you sin once the covenant was broken. That was it. Uh -huh. That's the kind of covenant it was. Mm -hmm. Now Actually, in Christ Jesus, the reason for making you righteousness is so, so you can fulfill the righteousness of the law. See, of course, this is stated in Scripture, Romans 8, 3 through 5. What the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, that is, the law depended on you. See, it was all addressed to you, and the law was no more effective than you were strong. We could, God sending his own son, the likeness of sin for flesh, and for sin condemns sin in the flesh that, that 
the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Amen. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You say, how can that be? God gives you his righteousness, and believe me when I tell you that his righteousness does fulfill the law. So we've been saved. God's not going to erase the law. He ended it as a means to righteousness. See? But it's still there. And it's, God's still not going to let anybody in who violates that law. Lawbreakers aren't getting in. Make no mistake about this. Now, you say, well, does that mean we, what about if we do sin? You, there's a provision made for forgiveness, and if you do sin, you better be the path to God. Amen. There's provision made for it. Uh -huh. But the righteousness of the law is fulfilled then in us. Why? Because we walked out after the flesh. God, in regeneration, God has created a people who can walk in righteousness. Amen. Now, the complicating factor is, He's left us with the old nature mm -hmm. still in, uh, connected with this body. Yeah. Yeah. But he's depowered yeah. the old nature with the circumcision of Christ by severing it yes. mm -hmm. from our real person. Mm -hmm. So it, we have to contend with it, but it does not have to dominate us. Amen. See? That's right. <laughs> now, having said this, these things, let's look at the R factor of the unilateral covenant. If what I have said is true, that this covenant all depends upon God, then there are cert then certain promises can be made because God, God is faithful now. God is faithful. So there are certain things we can say are. Under the law, we couldn't say are. We had to say ought. And that's what we had to say. Under the law, we said this, if. We had to say if. But now if God is faithful. And if he has found a man who can implement this thing, then God can make certain pronouncements about things that are. Amen. See? Amen. He says, we are delivered from the law. Yes. See, now, see this, if this wasn't a unilateral covenant, you could, he couldn't say this. Yeah. Uh -huh. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. See, if it wasn't that this was a unilateral covenant, uh -huh. this couldn't be said. Yeah. This would have to be like an objective. That's right. But it's not, this is what is. What it requires is, it's all realized in Christ. So if you, mm -hmm. if you cast all your attention upon Christ and, and your determination is to abide in Christ <laughs> and to live and move and have your being in him, then God will do all this. Then God will do all this yeah, other. Right. See that this will happen because it all depends on Christ. Mm -hmm. now, now, and as by He's a man. See, yeah. the fall came by man. The rescue had to come by man. Yeah. We are. La we are. We are laborers together with God. Yeah. <laughs> we are God's husbandry mm -hmm. or vineyard. We say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are. God's building. See, you couldn't say that if this was, was yeah. not a unilateral covenant. If this was based on what we do, we couldn't say we are. Yes. We understand we are, we're, we're, and many use this phrase quite a bit, and there's a sense in which it's true, we're a work in progress. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. But there's a sense in which that's not true, too. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So far as God's purpose is concerned, this is a finished work. Yes. Amen. Its contingency is whether or not you abide uh -huh. in the Son. See why the son's got to be preached. Yes. See, see why Amen. Jesus has yes. to be held out. Amen. See why this this stuff of, of relegating Jesus to the back seat. Yeah. This has got to stop because That's if right. the, if this if this is not rectified mm -hmm. and Jesus is not brought into the foreground, this whole thing falls to the ground. That's right. Amen. Amen. You are mm -hmm. washed. Yes. You are mm -hmm. sanctified. Mm -hmm. You are justified. First mm -hmm. Corinthians six eleven. See that's the R factor we're talking about. Mm -hmm. If God, if this wasn't a unilateral covenant, this kind of statement couldn't be made. This can be made no matter how long you've been in Christ. If you just come in, you are. If you've been in for a while, you are. If you've been in there for most of your life, you are. We are, this is 1 Corinthians 12, 13. We are baptized into one body. We are. 
Not we can be, ought to be, should be. We are. We are the epistle of Christ. Each one of us is a letter. You're a letter to your neighbors from Jesus. That's what you are. But that couldn't be true if this was not a unilateral covenant. If this depended on you, what kind of letter, I mean, what kind of letter would it be? We are the letter of Christ because of this covenant. God says, I will be their God. Now he tells them, he says, now don't, don't, don't be touching the unclean thing. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't touch the unclean thing. Then I'll discover that well, I will be your God. I will. Uh-huh. I'll come to your aid. Yeah. If you don't depend on somebody else, I'll, I'll handle this. Yes, amen. Amen. Your enemies won't be what they seem to be. Mm. See, the threats, the threats that come to you, they won't seem as invinci- they won't be as invincible as they seem to be. I'll be your God. Yeah. See that so you how why do, how could God make that kind of a commitment mm-hmm. if this wasn't a unilateral covenant? Yeah. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Not you, not you can be son. You are. You are. See, this, was, this is not the case under the law. God loved them, favored them. Then he had to tell them, say, I'm not going to be your God anymore. <laughs> but he told Hosea, I'm not going to be your God anymore. Because the covenant depended on them. Mm-hmm. You've got, you got to see this. Yeah. New covenant does it. We are, by grace, you are saved. Mm-hmm. See, you, are, you couldn't, this couldn't be true if God was, if this was not a unilateral covenant. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. See, that's the reason why he can speak with such certitude is because this is a one-sided covenant. And it all depends on the mediator, Christ Jesus, who is invincible. But the only way you can take advantage of Christ is to trust him, Mm -hmm. believe on him, depend on him, live for him. And if you do, this thing will not fail. It cannot fail. Again, you are complete. In him. Yes, amen. God could not say to Israel, you're complete in Moses. He, he couldn't say that. Moses was faithful in all his house, but did, that didn't count anything for the people. Yes, right? Am I right? Yes, he was faithful in all of his house, but God couldn't take that and get credit the people with it. Right. You are dead. Yeah. Colossians 3.3. 3, yeah. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Or how can that... It may not seem to you, it may not even seem to you like this is true. You, but, you know, if you, don't, if you don't know these things and depend on them, it'll sure not look to you like you're dead. <laughs> it'll look like the flesh is really alive. It says if you're in Christ, the body's dead because of sin. See, if this was not a unilateral covenant, that could not be said, brother. If this thing depended on you, it couldn't be said. Now, if there's someone that thinks, yeah, but what, the, what about the unfaithful person? It's all, you lay hold of it by faith. Mm-hmm. That's the difference between law yeah. and grace. That's right. Laws by doing, faith by believing. Yeah. The law is not a faith. The law never commanded anybody to believe. Mm. Take it out and see. Yeah. Never did make a commandment, to, thou shalt believe. Never made such a commandment. Mm-hmm. But in Christ, the believing is the lifeline yes, that taps you into this yes, unilateral uh-huh. covenant. And you've got to fight yes. to keep that faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. How are you going to lay hold on it? Because, you, because it's your effort, no, the eternal life is very real. It's out there. Uh-huh. But you have to lay hold. And faith can do it. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold. You couldn't say that if this wasn't a unilateral covenant. We are Christ's house. That's Hebrews 3.6. We are Christ's house. 
We're his household, is what we'd say. We're his household. We're the ones he provides for. We're the ones he sustains. We're the ones he keeps from falling. We're the ones he makes to stand. See, we're the ones that have access to the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are hidden in him. See, we're Christ's house. Now, this couldn't be true if this was not a unilateral covenant. How else could you be part of Christ's house? Pray tell. If, if Israel couldn't even be part of Moses' house, how could you be part of Christ's house and take advantage of all the provisions that are in Christ if this thing didn't depend on God? It's a one-sided covenant. We're made, we are made partakers of Christ. See, there it is. Through these exceeding great and precious promises. We're... And we're made partakers of Christ, Hebrews 3.14 okay. says. Uh -huh. How could you be made partakers of Christ if the covenant was really between you and God? Amen. How could this be possible? Yeah. Because God does not give and take. Yeah, right. this, yeah. huh, this is not how God is. Yeah. He had to make this with the Son. Amen. And then he tells you, you can have the benefit of this by believing on the Son adhering to the Son, living in the Son, you have all the benefits of the covenant that God made by Himself. You have all the benefits of it through Christ. Against Hebrews 10.10, 10, we are sanctified. See, these are factors. We are sanctified by the body of Christ, by the offering of the body of Christ. So it's what Jesus did, it's what Jesus did that puts you in. That's good stuff. I don't, I don't mind telling you. See, the fact that Christ offered his body, that's what gave you access. Under the law, you, you, had, to, you had to make a door. You had to make a door. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. But how could this be? If God, if this covenant was not a unilateral covenant, if God hadn't decreed this and rested it all in Christ and guaranteed it all in Christ, how could these statements possibly be made? They all presume your faith in Christ and your trust in Christ, that you've been added to Christ and you're depending upon him. And then you have this statement, as he is, so are. We in this world. Why, why is it? How is it that we're like Christ in the world? It's because God created us in, in all true righteousness and holiness in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're his workmanship. Yes. And he did it on the basis of what he wanted to do, not on the basis of what you did. Amen. And what he wanted to do was confirmed and validated by Christ's offering. Yes. Christ, in his offering, uh -huh. paid the debt yes. that was owed to God because of sin. Mm -hmm. See, sin creates a debt yes. to God. We Amen. couldn't pay it. Israel couldn't pay it. Uh -huh. Thousands of rams, thousands of sheep they offered. They couldn't. Jesus paid the debt. Now God does what he purposed to do in himself because the way has been cleared Amen. to do it. Amen. So because the uh, covenant is unilateral, one-sided, the cause rests with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus is the primary worker. God puts us into Christ where all the benefits are hidden. We do not get credit for what Jesus did. He receives all the glory for what he did. We receive the benefits that accrue in him because we believe in him. <laughs> well, at this is a marvelous arrangement, brethren. This is a marvelous arrangement. You can't satisfactorily explain this to a legalist, but you can to a believer. I tell you, when you live by faith and you hear this, it brings the bells. 
Now I have the joy bells yeah. ringing in my heart. That's, see, that's what happens when you hear this. Because you know you're not up to what God requires. You, I mean, you know this. But God can make you up to what uh, he requires. And he does it through Christ according to his own purpose. Amen. Amen. Is Brother Michael, do you have the exhortation?